Over the last decade, HAF has really been able to carve out a niche for itself as a unique organization that provides advocacy. It represents the interests of Hindus both here in America and worldwide in a very professional, uh, credible manner. HAF is very effective because HAF is run by professionals. There are lawyers, doctors, economists, and these people have the ability to look at Hinduism in a very rational, factual way. When they have their opinions, they have the ability to relate and communicate those opinions to a very broad set of audience within America. It comes down to that there's no other Hindu group that does this type of work. Pluralism is beyond tolerance. It means the acceptance of different paths and different ways of living, thinking about God, thinking about truth. Hinduism is a billion strong, and it is the last major religious tradition that has pluralism as one of its core values. We try to take steps, whether it be through the media, or legal advocacy, or public policy advocacy in Washington, D.C., to say, look, what we are doing here is not only bringing a voice to Hindu Americans and Hindus worldwide, but what we're trying to achieve is a more pluralistic society. Advocacy is about educating, speaking up, and building relationships. While religious freedom is cherished and it is in the First Amendment of our Constitution, the fact of the matter is it is incumbent upon us to stand up for ourselves and to promote who we are and explain what we're all about in the United States. And when we talk about what's important to us, we can make a change in society. That change could simply be a better textbook for your uh, son or daughter. It could be something much bigger, like making sure that the U.S. government doesn't support missionary work to convert non-Christians around the world. The American system is based on representation, but there are many paths to that representation, and advocacy is one of the best tools available. Advocacy is important to the Hindu American community because we have to speak up for ourselves. We have to ensure that our way of life is represented correctly. We have the resources, we have the education to be advocates. One of the pillars of HAF advocacy has always been public policy advocacy. The foundation has been going to Congress, going to Capitol Hill for countless years now, advocating for issues on behalf of the community. So every year uh, around September, uh, we come to DC where we meet with as many congressmen and, and senators and their staffers as possible and we speak to them about matters of pending legislative interest. We bring along with us our members and supporters who are not full-time staff uh, but whose contributions help make HAF possible. We want to engage them on substantive policy issues and move past the sort of you know, photo op, superficial type things we've done in the past and really start talking about issues that affect us here as Americans. This year at the 7th Annual Capitol Hill Reception, we had the opportunity to honor leaders in public policy as well as some of our interfaith partners and community uh, leaders. We seek to serve as a bridge between the Hindu community and institutions that make or influence public policy in America. This goes way beyond just coming to Washington every year. We regularly meet with uh, not just congressmen and senators, but mayors and city council members, state senators, state representatives in places around the country. The Council on Foreign Relations is one of the most influential think tanks that uh, have an impact on U.S. foreign policy and U.S. foreign relations with other nations. And it has developed or created a uh, religious advisory council which previously to our involvement with the council did not have any representatives of the Dharmic traditions. United States Constitution, one of its bedrock principles is not only freedom uh, of religion, the ability to practice one's faith uh, without government regulation, but it's also freedom from religion. The government cannot endorse one religion over another. In South Carolina, the lieutenant governor there decided that he was going to uh, personally push through the state legislature a license plate that had a cross on there. So the taxpayers of South Carolina would be paying for a license plate that promotes Christianity. 
We again filed a brief in that case along with other groups and we were successful in getting the license plate legislation thrown out. A lot of the mainstream organizations that cover human rights fail to recognize the plight of Hindu minorities throughout the world. So that's where HAF comes in. The, the main countries that are covered in the report include Pakistan, Malaysia, Bangladesh, Trinidad and Tobago, Fiji, and Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and Sri Lanka. Some of the patterns that emerge are uh, persecution against women, uh, violence against women, there's kidnappings, kidnappings for ransom, uh, forced conversions, and in countries such as Pakistan, there's an entire set of, of laws that uh, institutionalize discrimination against Hindus. We needed to bring the attention of the world, uh, the media, the politicians, the policy makers, to say, ah, this is happening to Hindus. It is absolutely unacceptable the inhumane, intolerant way in which Hindus are treated in South Asia. And you serve uh, as spokespeople trying to galvanize here in the United States, not only the rights of Hindus here in the U.S., but equally importantly, uh, the, the safety, the security of, of Hindus throughout South Asia. The dialogue on caste that was taking place in interfaith circles at the U.S. government level, at the United Nations, at the European Union level, generally involved non-Hindus. We felt it was important for us to say that Hinduism does not support caste-based discrimination. There are basically two premises of the caste report. Uh, the first is that caste-based discrimination, while it may be a social problem in India, it is not intrinsic to the practice of Hinduism. And the second is that the reality of caste in India today is complicated by political and economic factors that have nothing to do with religion. The Religion News Writers Association is the largest gathering of journalists who cover the religion beat. The importance of this meeting is being able to reach out to a large number of journalists and provide them materials on Hinduism from the perspective of practicing Hindus. The Hindu American Foundation has had a great deal of success in reaching out to the media through its press releases, but with the advent of the blogosphere and fora like the Washington Post, the Huffington Post, or Patheos, it's really allowed us to take our voice, our advocacy to the next level, being able to delve deeply into topics like abortion or gay marriage or the mosque building in New York City. These are a variety of issues where previously there may not have been a Hindu American voice. We, we have not walked away from the most controversial issues of our time. So the Hindu American Foundation launched its Take Back Yoga campaign back in 2008. When we read through the yoga journals or the periodicals, the media uh, that helps define yoga for the American population or even the international population, we saw that it referred to the great spirituality of the Hindu tradition without ever using the word Hindu. And what we noticed was a conscious delinking of yoga from its Hindu roots. As the Hindu American Foundation, we felt compelled to speak up. The Take Back Yoga campaign that started with the Washington Post has been seen on the front page of the New York Times as an episode on CNN as well as NPR. People who were not really thinking of putting yoga and Hinduism in the same sentence are now starting to think about it and say, well, maybe there is a relation between yoga and Hinduism. What more is there to this practice than just the physical aspect of it? Textbook adoption is really important to the Hindu American community in the United States. One of the earliest introductions that Americans at large have to Hinduism is in public school textbooks. Most people who teach Hinduism are not Hindus. And what we have found is a caste cows karma approach, a way in which Hinduism is caricatured or portrayed inaccurately or stereotyped. Participating in textbook reform is a marquee uh, priority for the Hindu American Foundation. We've participated in California, we've participated in Texas, we've participated in Virginia. If we want to affect how Hinduism is portrayed and more importantly how Hinduism is understood, 
we have to start at the basics, and that's in textbooks. The American Academy of Religions is the largest gathering of academic scholars, professors who either study or teach religion in universities not only in the United States but around the world. Being able to have the opportunity to go to the American Academy of Religions really is, uh, is beneficial for two reasons. First, it allows us as advocates to get a finger on the pulse of what type of studies, what type of papers are being presented on Hinduism and to see are these truly reflected. Hindu Americans ought to be an interfaith dialogue because to be Hindu is to be pluralistic. And the whole idea of ekam sat vipraha bahuda vadanti from the Rig Veda is something that we need to insert into the interfaith conversation. Well, I think AJF is important for the future generation because the future generation needs to be able to stand up for themselves. And at the foundation, we really wanted to start engaging them at the high school and the college level. One of the first things that the foundation did was launch its Next Gen Essay Contest. Our idea was to get Hindu American youth to think about themselves as Hindu Americans as opposed to just an ethnic identity. In 2010, the Hindu American Foundation launched its Capitol Hill internship program and placed a small group of interns in various congressional offices. This provided these young interns with an opportunity to get a real feel for what it's like to work within the halls of Congress. It's a really great way for us to engage Hindu American youth and get them active on the public policy advocacy front. I support HAF because I don't see anyone else doing what HAF is doing. 